What's going on everyone? About 85% of stocks in the S&P 500 closed up in the green today and I hope you guys are ready because we are heading into the biggest trading day of the week as we have some crucial inflation data about to release and this report will be extremely important for the market going forward as it'll give some good key insight uh, to Powell and the rest of the Fed members as they decide how much to decrease rates by. On top of that, we have a lot of uh, other things going on in the market right now, like how Chipotle CEO just randomly left the company and now joined Starbucks. So we might be uh, seeing some guacamole at Starbucks soon. <laughs> No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but uh, anyways, we have a lot of good stuff today. And towards the end, we have a pretty interesting big money play. So stick with us. And besides that, let's jump right into it. Yeah, the market was pretty insane today. Looking at the uh, SPY overall, we had a very nice green day. I know that we showed the heat map already, but going back to it, there was a lot of bright spots out there. But once again, wh what was the main fuel of the market today? Definitely the big tech stocks. NVIDIA and the chip stocks specifically did very well again. They did very well yesterday as well. If we actually go to a chart of NVIDIA, we can see how good that they've been recovering up the past couple days. Mike, I don't know about you, but I'm getting flashbacks of NVIDIA from a couple months ago, back whenever they were uh, <laughs> back on their ripper there. And yeah, you know, they're actually getting pretty high in the short term here. Uh, looking at them, they're all the way up to 116. And we actually saw the SPY have a good close above 540 today, which was a pretty good resistance in the short term as well. So um, overall, today was a pretty good bright spot for the market and what was it fueled by starbucks right i mike you had me dying there at the beginning with the, with with the guacamole joke with starbucks but nonetheless you know it's kind of weird whenever you see such a big ceo like the ceo of chipotle which is a powerhouse company right um i know that they've been falling a little bit in the short term but it's just interesting to see a ceo of such a powerful business just up and leave and switch to Starbucks like this. Exactly. And again, it's not like Chipotle is out here struggling or anything like that. By uh, many metrics, they are crushing the game and they're definitely crushing a lot of their competitors. But maybe, just maybe, this is what uh, Starbucks needs because Starbucks, as we can tell by looking at their stock, has definitely been falling behind quite a bit. But talking about this a little bit more specifically, um, the former CEO of uh, Chipotle, which is Brian Nickel, uh, he he joined Starbucks, and while they didn't give any super specific plans about uh, how uh, Starbucks will be changed or what will change going forward, um, many investors really like to see this for Starbucks because, you know, it's kind of like a new shot at a new phase of growth. And this is happening again during a time where Starbucks is kind of slowing down a little bit. As we look at Starbucks in like a practical trading sense, while it's great to see this news, um, Starbucks is not at a low enough price in order for me to justify buying shares at this point. But I do think there is an opportunity in like a different uh, trading sense where this short term optimism and bullishness with Starbucks can present a nice bullish skew with the stock going forward. A lot of times we see good news or earnings or any good event come out with with, you know, a specific stock, and especially when it gets a lot of media attention, just like this Starbucks example, we can see the stock, you know, move for weeks to months at a time based off of the root uh, sentiment that uh, resulted from the news. So basically going forward with Starbucks, uh, it can present some short-term trading opportunities riding this recent news. And the best way to go about doing that is just uh, taking like short-term trades with the stock, of course, in a risk-controlled and smart way. But uh, Starbucks will definitely be on my radar going forward because of this news. And I'm also very excited to see what uh, the CEO does with this uh, Starbucks situation. Yeah, me too. I mean, I think that there's a lot of different scenarios here where this CEO could come in and do a lot of things with Starbucks. You know, honestly, the opportunity with Starbucks is definitely there. You know, they obviously deal with coffee a lot. I mean, I thought that joke was kind of funny how you said guacamole, but you know, what if they start to actually get into like food a little bit more or, you know, add some other stuff? It could be pretty interesting. Personally, I've been averaging into Starbucks on that big dip to the downside. So I'm definitely happy to see this uh, this move here. That's for sure. Uh, I've been a pretty big fan of Starbucks on that dip. And I was really loving that support around 73. Now, keep in mind, I was buying the dip on the way down. So uh, the average price is a little bit higher. And 
Uh, even my girlfriend has some shares of Starbucks, which is kind of funny. But nonetheless, Mike, uh, I think that today it's a little bit too overpriced after this jump. I know a lot of people are probably going to be out there thinking like, oh my gosh, I need to buy in now with the new CEO. Like it just made a big gap on the chart. It's up 20% for a stock that never moves like this. So just be ready for a little bit of consolidation here. All righty. So that is the big news there. But as we all know, we have some crucial data set to release tomorrow. So one hour before the market opens, we will have the CPI data get released. And this will basically represent uh, the most recent inflation data. And this is extremely important because it'll tell uh, Jerome Powell and many other key decision makers uh, with the economy uh, what they need to do in terms of inflation and these upcoming rate cuts. As of right now, there's a 54% chance that we will see a 50 basis point rate cut on September 18th of 2024, and there's around a 46% chance of a 25 basis point rate cut. The main thing is that we're set to get rate cuts either way. It's more so a question of how big will these rate cuts be and how quick will they come, uh, at least for the full rate cut. And again, the inflation data will help, uh, you know, give the Fed and Jerome Powell a clearer picture to make a as best of a decision as possible. But looking at the inflation data specifically for tomorrow, essentially we could see that the inflation rate came in at 3% last time. If we see a data reading that is a lot greater than 3% or a lot less than 3% than three percent, so let's say like 2.7% to like 3.3%, if we see an inflation rating somewhere outside of uh, that uh, range, that is where the market can truly go crazy because that would be a, you know, a data point that is outside of what is expected. So basically, if we see a crazy inflation reading tomorrow, expect a lot of movement because that'll mean that the market will have to reprice in the rate cut, um, I guess you could say prospects, and it'll just bring some uh, unneeded panic and extreme emotions into the market. But be ready one hour before the market opens tomorrow, we should see some uh, pretty good movement. Yeah, and inflation is a big topic. I'm glad you brought up those rate cuts potentially coming, right? Uh, this is one of the big data points over the next month that will kind of decide like, hey, is the Federal Reserve going to do this or not? This is definitely one of the data points that they will be looking at and the market will be looking at to try to price that in. I, I actually thought, Mike, that the movement today being so positive ahead of this event was kind of surprising to me. You know, I kind of expected a little bit more chop in the short term, but it looks like the market was, you know, I'm not saying uh, pricing in, you know, something good happening, but it was definitely good to see this price action ahead of the event as well. Like I said, I expected a little bit more chop at least towards uh, the end of the day, but tomorrow morning will definitely tell the whole story. Just don't forget one hour before the market opens. If you're going to wake up early this week, tomorrow is the day. No doubt. And of course, rate cuts and inflation uh, have a big impact on the economy as a whole. And there are some uh, pretty worrying data points that uh, we just came across. So we wanted to make sure uh, everyone stays uh, up to date with them. But basically, U.S. commercial property foreclosures are increasing quite a bit uh, and pretty consistently. We can see that U.S. commercial property foreclosures are now at the highest level since 2015, and they have been increasing non-stop. So this is uh, some data to definitely just keep in the back of your head going forward, but also keep a close eye on uh, some delinquency data as credit card delinquencies are at their highest level since 2012. And now 11% of US credit card balances are 90 days delinquent. And that rate is only increasing. So again, keep this in mind going forward. While the stock market can give one impression the economy can be saying something completely different. That's really weird for me to say, Mike. 11% of credit cards are delinquent. That is uh, at least 90 days delinquent, too. We're not just saying 30 days here. You know, this is a this is actually a pretty big number, and I'm glad that we're uh, we're looking at it in this way because to see it jump so much in the short term, I think just shows the state of the economy for the normal consumer. You know, right now. Warren Buffett is sitting up, kicking his legs, selling his Apple shares. He loves it, right? <laughs> I'll bet that the uh, the normal, let's say, lower to middle class person is probably feeling the pressure right now a lot more. And uh, a lot of people try to argue like, hey, 
you know, we haven't been in a recession, right? Don't forget, they changed the uh, the ruling on that, Mike. Remember, they decided just to change the definition out of nowhere. A lot of people have argued that we've actually been in one this year already. But, uh, you know, obviously there's a, de there's a debate to be had there. You can have that in the comments down below. But uh, it's definitely a, a worrying sign to see. And I know that the market's been shifting a little bit in the short term as well. You know, obviously the SPY has been coming back over the past like five to seven trading days. But overall, this dip from highs was pretty worrying in the short term. Yep, no doubt about that. Um, as we go throughout the week, there are some uh, earnings that'll add some volatility to the mix, so keep that in mind. And looking at tomorrow more specifically, it's not going to be that crazy of a day. Uh, Thursday is where the action uh, truly starts to happen, as Alibaba, Walmart, and JD are all set to report. But again, keep a close eye on the earnings list for the week. But besides that, Tom, uh, traders are looking at spy right now and uh spy is at an interesting point in the sense that it's still uh in this like rebound phase from recent lows but at the same time it's definitely lacking the level of euphoria that it had a couple of weeks and months ago with that being said what would you say are the key levels to watch for spy going into tomorrow and the rest of the week yeah, in the short term here, SPY actually had a really good pop today, and I thought that the move higher was was awesome. You know, we ended up breaking a lot of big resistances, and those resistances are now going to become support. So in the short term for support, I'm really watching 540. That was a great level to get and hold above today. It even tried to test it after it broke out above there. So I'll be watching 540 very closely as support, 538, 537, and 536.40 to the downside. If it goes down more than that i'll be looking at like 534 which is essentially the low from pre-market today uh if we do keep continuing mike on this recovery back uh i'm really watching 548 and 550 very closely in the short term as well as 544 and i will say that i did take a couple lines off the chart because i wanted uh to clean the charts up a little bit but i'll add them back here just so you guys can see them real quick <laughs> Sounds good. But yeah, as we look at SPY and just the market right now, it's important to, of course, remain adaptable, but also uh, be, be aware of the key levels that Tom said, because like we saw for the past couple of trading days, there was a lot of heavy resistance overhead. And once the market broke through that today, it really brought in even more buying pressure, which is just kind of the way you'd expect the market to work with the uh, key support and resistance levels. Remember, we have that very important inflation data set to release one hour before market open. So that'll bring in that extra volatility, which will ultimately uh, make for some better trading opportunities. But besides that, Tom, let's jump right into some setups and predictions. And a stock I'm watching very closely right now is PayPal, and it is to the upside. So looking at PayPal right now, it has been consolidating uh, over the past couple of months. And just recently, it started to truly gain the upwards momentum that this stock desperately needs. Uh, looking at it, it has been making higher lows over the past couple of months, which is also a good sign. And today it showed a good amount of bullish price action that uh, many other stocks lacked. Uh, I guess you could say besides some of the big tech stocks, but regardless, uh, PayPal is uh, showing some good buying uh, pressure and good bullish flows coming into the stock right now. And assuming it can get back above that $65.70 area for tomorrow, it'll definitely be on my upside radar. Yeah, I like it quite a bit. You know, both on the daily chart and on the intraday chart looks pretty good. That resistance is pretty solid overhead as well. So if we get a good break, I'll definitely be watching it. It was one of my favorite stocks with its intraday price action today. With my first stock, I'm looking at SMCI Super Microcomputer. I really like the move with this one today. And it rejected at that high of day at 585. But these chip stocks have been recovering up like crazy. So I'm really going to be watching this one for another breakout back above that level. And going over to the book map on SMCI, there's actually a good support in the short term. So I'm really watching 564 and 565 as major supports down here. I'm highlighting them in blue. So uh, that's a pretty big level there, Mike. If we end up holding that into tomorrow and we see a good breakout back above that high of day today, 
which like I said, was right around that 585 mark. I will be watching this one back up. Um, I really love the support. It doesn't necessarily have to break 585 for me to go long, but we just need to see some good buying pressure at open, right? We've been seeing some great buying pressure over the past few days, and it's uh, it's really good to see these chip stocks continuing to go on this tear like this. It's definitely helping to carry the spy in the market higher in the short term. No doubt. And if you guys are in the short term trading and you haven't already tried Bookmap, definitely check it out. It'll be that first link in the description in the comments down below, as you'll be able to see in real time exactly where the buy orders and sell orders are lining up, as well as many, many other features that the Bookmap platform uh, presents. Uh, it's really awesome. And uh, you can also save uh, if you use the link down below as a special offers icon will appear. But again, definitely check it out if you haven't already. Book map is awesome, but uh, with my next play, I am looking at Apple, and it is to the downside. Uh, Apple is one of those stocks that has been recovering in such a great way over the past couple of trading days, but it's also getting to the point where it's getting a little bit overextended, and it doesn't have news that is that great either, no matter which way you look at it, especially with the way that Buffett has sold uh, half of his stake, but regardless, um, the stock is overextended to the upside. The news isn't all that great, and Apple stock hasn't even been that strong over the past year either. So with everything being said, I like this trade for like a mean reversion style play where I'm looking to trade it in a bearish way. But uh, before someone just jumps into Apple in a bearish way, it'll be important to be aware of how the market is moving. For example, if inflation data comes in great tomorrow and the entire market starts ripping to the upside, there's no point in trying to fight that momentum by shorting Apple, where on the other hand, if the inflation data comes in in a bad way and the market is selling off uh, pretty quickly, that would only make this Apple setup even better. So so definitely keep that in mind. As always, keep a close uh, eye on what the market itself is doing. But Apple is definitely on my bearish radar. Yeah, mine too. And I like that you mentioned it being like a mean reversion style type of play. I'm actually looking at the SPY uh, for a bit of a play like that in the short term myself. But I'll definitely keep it on the radar with Apple too. I think that would be one that would definitely have some good movement with the market there. With my next play, Mike, I'm joining Roaring Kitty and uh pushing chewy here no i'm just i'm just joking uh nonetheless though chewy is doing pretty good in the short term it was up four percent today um i know that this stock has i don't want to say had some negative flack with it lately mike but you know it had all that good pressure with roaring kitty it's been selling off now it's been recovering up on the dip i really do like this recovery back up in the short term so if i'm able to see another rebreak of 25 dollars even tomorrow i'll be looking for a push towards that high of day today and then another breakout coming in but just look at that movement around open today with chewy that's what i want to see tomorrow i don't want to see like an open like we saw on monday you know where we just open chopped around for the first 30 minutes went flat it did end up going higher but we didn't really see that good volume come in or that good upside volatility like we saw this morning so i really want to see that good upside action just like it opened today Sounds good. And yeah, looking at Chewy, it has uh, started to recover in a pretty strong way over like the past week or so, which is a good sign. And, you know, like you said, the stock has been, uh, you know, it, it's, ha it's had quite the year. We'll put it that way. But <laughs> this is a stock I like for the long term. So I uh, definitely am not complaining with some of this uh, more recent price action. But besides that, we are all clear for today's momentum plays. And with the first one, we have Zoom to the upside. Yeah, Zoom's looking pretty good here in the short term, 2.4% today. Uh, I know PayPal did good today too, but if Zoom can break 57 tomorrow, then keep watching it up. All right. With the next one, we have MU also to the upside. MU, pretty nice movement by the chip stocks in the short term. Now, MU is approaching a big resistance at 100, but if we do see a breakout above 97.80, then maybe target like 99 to 100 to the upside. All right, and then with the last one, we have NIO also to the upside. All three up today, Mike. I don't know the last time that that's happened. <laughs> but uh, looking at NIO in the short term, it's very close to $4 a share. But if it breaks that high of day today around $3.91, I'll be looking for a push towards $4 and maybe even a break of 4 
All right, sounds good. So we have these three stocks on watch for potential day trades tomorrow if and only if they break through the levels Tom listed. The stronger and more consistent that these stocks move, the uh, better the setups become. So keep them close on watch for tomorrow. And again, if they don't break the levels listed, then do not force the setup. But besides that, we are all clear for today's $619,000 big money trade. Today, we are looking at ticker symbol BHVN, where the big money bought the 30 strike call options for September 20th of 2024. This stock uh, just reported earnings, and it is bouncing in a major way off the $32.50 support level. Looking at this stock on a more, and you could say a broader sense, it has been uptrending in a strong way over the past couple of years. Um, this stock is a biotech stock, so it will move in an extra volatile way compared to most other stocks. But I like how these options are already in the money and there's, you know, a little bit of time to them, but not too much time where I think we should see a big move somewhat soon. But either way, this stock will be uh, close on my radar. Yeah, I really like this channel that this one's in. I'm sure that there's going to be a lot of people who like might want to like wait for the breakout uh, you know, of the top of the channel before entering. Honestly, I think in the short term, I really love the price action here. 6.33% today, it's pointing higher. I would not be surprised if it broke 40 tomorrow and over the next few days started to test this 42 resistance, at least the top of the range. Now, am I saying that the first test of this resistance we're going to break? No, not necessarily, but I do love the price action in the short term. And I think that up into the top of the range here, at least in the short term, could be a pretty good way to go. So I really like the big money play. The only thing is it's, it's the 30 strike, right? It's pretty far in the money compared to like what I think uh, the majority of traders out there would get. But just realize that the big money might be using this strike to be extra safe, okay? So uh, you got to keep that in mind. You know, like they might n honestly not be mad if these expire around 40, whereas somebody in the short term might be a little bit more upset by that. So just realize that whenever you trade these big money plays. No doubt. But as we look at everything, uh, especially with SPY and the overall market, uh, it has been uptrending in a pretty strong way over the past week. And while that's awesome, let's continue to remain adaptable and be ready for the inflation data one hour before the market opens. This data has uh, a lot more importance than most people think because of how it influences interest rates and just the whole economic uh, situation in general, right? It's very important. And as many people just know from going to the grocery store, inflation over the past couple of years has been uh, pretty uncontrollable. And while a lot of progress has been made, the uh, war against inflation has not been won just yet. So definitely keep that in mind. Be prepared for the extra volatility for tomorrow. Let's continue to trade in a smart, disciplined, long-term oriented way. And it all starts with trading habits. Uh, one of the best things that everyone can do is to have a plan before you enter a trade. So don't just blindly enter enter a trade, you know, in a bullish or bearish way, just because you think a stock might be moving in one direction or another, right? It's important to, you know, have a plan so you could have a much clearer, deeper understanding of why you are actually entering or exiting, but also at the same time, have a plan in the event your thesis does not end up playing out. It's impossible to be correct 100% of the time. So that means it's extremely important to, you know, manage these situations where you are incorrect, right? So the loss can stay as small as possible. These are just a couple of the good, healthy trading habits that traders should have. Uh, we have a whole list uh, dedicated to this sort of stuff in the Stocked Up Discord. So definitely check that out. But Tom, let's give a giant shout out to today's member of the day in the Discord, which is Alex M. And uh, he's been in the community for a couple months now. And he had a post today saying, uh, the YouTube video is coming through clutch with the spy play. Let's go. And he said, uh, thanks, Mike and Tom. So awesome job there, Alex. Keep on rolling. And uh, it's awesome to see a post like this one. Um, again, if you guys wanted to learn deeper and learn more about the smart trading, healthy trading habits, uh, check out that key lessons channel in the Stocked Up Discord. Uh, 
We've made this available uh, to everyone for free, so definitely check that out. And uh, besides that, if you are new to the channel, consider demolishing that subscribe button to get our videos recommended to you more often. We post all the time and cover all the important information you have to know about the market. It takes us hours to make these videos, so when you subscribe, you'll get them recommended to you more often. Besides that, thank you all so much for watching, and let's have an amazing day in the market tomorrow.